Greetings and welcome to a special video in my EverQuest 2 series. I am Nandiara Mistwalker, leader of the Rain Dancers Guild. Today we are doing something a little different. We are not going to run through a heritage quest, we're going to run through Neck Castle. One of the more complicated zones in the game, there are a lot of steps to unlocking and opening the doors inside of this zone. First, take the griffin up to Bone Lake. Keep an eye on where you're going, we'll jump off before we get there. The bridge to the south of the lake is called the Headstone Walkway. That's where we'll jump. Follow the path to the northeast through all the golems and zombies to come to the castle entrance. Up the rickety wooden ramp bridge and into the castle. When you walk forward after entering the castle, you will automatically get a quest. A little way further, and you'll talk to a guy offering a second quest. Accept both. You'll finish them as we proceed. One thing I noticed this time through the zone was that the respawns are no longer as they were. You used to have to clear the courtyard each time you ran through it. The respawn timer was less than five minutes. But this time I cleared it once and didn't have to again. It was like that all the way through. All the golems, ghosts, and zombies that would repopulate were just not rehappening anymore. The first place we need to head to is the chapel in the southeastern part of the ground floor. Fight through the hallways and ignore the side rooms for the moment. We'll get back to them later. Inside the chapel is a group of ghostly priestesses. Once they are dead, the Inquisitor will spawn. Kill him, and a ghost named Alexa will appear standing on top of the altar. Listen to what she has to say. Her quest comes later, but you need the information she gives you to understand why we're doing what we're doing. She then disappears. What she told you was that the next place you need to go is the game room, but that's not strictly accurate. In order to open all the doors, there are a few additional quests to finish as we go through here. When you leave the chapel, turn right and follow the path to the arch at the end. There is a mounted boar's head that you need to examine. Take the marble to get the quest and turn back. On the way back, let's stop by the jail and look around. You'll need a piece from one of the guards to update the quest you got from the guy in the courtyard. You'll need to remember the ghostly frog for later questing. Cross the courtyard to get to the next room we're going to, the guest dining room, where another boar's head awaits.
Once you put the black marble into the second head, the barracks will unlock. After clearing the dining room and getting the marble, swing past the servants' quarters, where you'll kill the Everling manservants until you get the guest room key. Go to the barracks. Kill all the ghosts. Pick up the other red marble from a chest against the wall. This red marble goes into the first boar's head. Once you place it, the quest will finish and the library will be unlocked. Let's head back and do that now. Just off the courtyard is the stables. The stable boy has a piece for the quest you got from the guy at the entrance, and if there are pigs in here, kill them. There used to be a 15 minute timer between pig spawns. They're placeholders for a name that you need to get for a quest at a later date. I do not know if that respawn still happens. I'll have to go back and figure that out before we need him. After you get the second marble placed in the first head, the Swine Lord will spawn and start walking down the hall. He's not part of a quest, he just appears and you get to kill him. Now, we finally head to the game room. Cross the courtyard and head to the southwest corner of the map.
There are some ghosts in here that have to re-die, and then you need to search the room and find the note that Alexa told you about. Search the dartboard. The chessboard. And the two pool cue racks on the walls. One of the four will have the note. It's random as far as I know. Once you get the note, you learn about a secret door built into the bottom floor walls to get upstairs. Twist the sconce and you're in. There are, of course, guardians in the form of golems and mimic chests. Head up the stairs and clear the room. At this point, all of the doors on the upper floor are locked, and they unlock one at a time as you're moving around. Just go on your killing spree, and by the time you're done, you'll be able to go everywhere. You'll need to examine the diary on the dresser to spawn the sister whose room you are in. She doesn't spawn here though. She's up on the parapets. This is because you need to talk to Alexa again, so you don't kill the name for the quest update before the requirement is given. Once up on the top floor, Alexa appears and babbles at you for ages again. Then you need to go kill all the undead forms of her sisters to unlock the basement. Each girl lives in one of the six towers. Taking them clockwise is the easiest. There are golems and ghosts in each tower, except for this first one, the western tower, and rummaging through her dresser makes the zombie sister spawn. Kill her and move on. Next is on the crossing path up on the ramparts. Sometimes there is an undead minotaur that roams here for like 10 minutes after you zone in to unspawn once the timer is done. I don't know much about him, unfortunately. Head back to the western side of the walkways to the northwestern tower.
This is where I made a mistake. I didn't examine the bed in Krista's room. So we will see me backtrack and return to this bed in a bit. Examining the bed lets you read Krista's diary, which says she is over in Melanie's room in the Northeastern Tower playing with her. The girls will not spawn there if you do not read the diary in the bed. We'll be back here in a bit, but you can learn from my mistake. As you can see, Krista and Melanie are not here. Speaking of mistakes, sometimes you need to be careful with your pulls. Because of the way the castle is laid out, it's easy to aggro creatures from nearby hallways or rooms on the other side of walls. Getting back up into the ramparts isn't hard now that you've unlocked the bottom floor, but it is rather annoying. Luckily, I remembered the bed as I was retracing my steps, so I could get the sisters spawned up in Melanie's room. The southeasternmost room is Deirdre's, and she has an entrance to the basement in her floor. It's a good thing, because as soon as you get into the room, a huge demon archfiend spawns. Luckily, he is nailed to the floor. Deirdre is in the basement. If you're quick, you can run past the demon. Just make sure to put any mercs or pets on peaceful so they don't stay to fight him and die. It is possible to kill him if you have some good range damage and healing spells, or in a group that has some decent cooperation.
Once all six sisters are dead, Alexa appears again, telling you about the secret entrance to the basement in her father's room that you will need to use to get her only brother's locket to open the door to her father's workshop. At this point, I went down the central staircase to turn in the quest to the guy in the courtyard. I also wanted to show where the secret entrance to Deirdre's room is, since I forgot to go down the short hallway while I was in there. In between the chapel and the first boar's head is another sconce that twists, granting access to the hallway underneath Deirdre's room. Now, we'll go back to get to the sconce by the game room. To get back up to the ramparts, to get to the northern part of the castle, where dear old daddy's room is. The doors don't open yet. You need to go to the other room in that area to kill the zombie that has the key to Everling's bedroom.
Once you get that key, you can target the doors and open them. Read the book on the stand. Once you're done, the captain of the guard will spawn and run at you. Once the captain is dead, you can use the secret entrance to the basement. Right click on the stand next to the bookshelf and the shelves will swing open to reveal two strange floating zombie robot things. The golem guard on the staircase is annoying, the passing has never worked right, and he charges up and down the stairs kind of randomly. Open the secret door and kill the rats in the wine cellar. Down the hallway is another sconce to a secret room. The books inside will attack you. But once you read that huge scroll, you'll find that it's a map of all the secret doors in the basement. Now you can get to some places you need to be. First, though, we're going to go get a piece of paper from inside a box. It's the starter for a heritage quest we'll be doing later. I haven't examined it yet. I want to start that quest and do it in one video. I went back to the wine cellar and found the tiny secret door in the wall, but that's the way to get to Everling's workshop, and we're not going there yet. Use your map to find the brother's coffin crypt thing to get his locket. Everling really loved his moving walls. Once you find the right place, Alexa is there, and she attacks you for some reason. Oh, hey, look, she tricked us into coming down here so Daddy can have more parts for his experiments. After she's dead, her brother's ghost spawns and talks.
been attacks. Once he's dead, once you've killed all seven undead siblings, you can open the workshop door. So, back to the little door close to the wine cellar and down the hallway. More moving walls open as you proceed, giving you several battles on the way. At the end of the hallway, there's a door that you can now open, but don't go rushing in there. Stick close to the right side of the door and slide into the room to read the book on the table. The monster in there, the Juggernaut, has a quest to kill him that you can get before fighting him. Shortest quest in the game. After that's done, you go into Maltus Everling's workshop. Get close to him and he'll start rambling, angry that you've come in and killed everything. He tries to start his machine, it won't start and he blames you. Then he and his zombie helpers attack. Do not use area of effect spells in this room. There are non-aggro mobs floating about that can be a real pain if you invite them into the battle. Remember this chest for later. After he's dead, you can get to the portal exit, which is good because you can't go through the doors out anymore. I am Nandiara Mistwalker of the Rain Dancers. And this has been Nectarpost Castle. Happy dancing!